I'm very happy to take part in this uh, streaming project during this difficult and strange period. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Daniel Barenboom and Emmanuel Pau for inviting me. Uh, this is a good opportunity to show uh, that we can cluster together and wander through our mind with music. In the process of composing, we are locked with a lot of musical and pictorial landscapes which allow us to escape. Um, it, it's like uh, in a dream. About the whole, the Bullets Hall, magical place. And to share this moment with, uh, with the audience and my colleagues is meaningful to me. The piece is dedicated to Emmanuel Pau, who is one of the greatest covers of sound uh, that I have come to know. About the name of the piece, Terre d'Ombre, um, Earth of Shadows. It's, uh, it's about a bird who has lost the ability to sing, but it's gradually recovering this gift it's like a, a lost song emerging from cloud. This piece is lonesome, but stay positive, optimistic. Uh, you know, when the shadows exist, it means that life is not far. Ultimately, the earth remains a solid element and it will all turn green again, for sure, I hope. Uh, let me give you, give you some keys uh, so you can see where I'm, getting, I'm getting at. During long moments of silence, uh, the bird listens to a inner melody, which does not break off with, uh, with silence. Music makes one with silence. It's like um, a reflection of silence. The melody is ours and it helps us to recompose the mindscape uh, step by step. The bird song is supposed to lead the auditor to find, um, to find their way back. It's like a, a dream of flight. The way I compose is with um, intermediate intermediality. Yeah. Uh, it's a correlation between the different fields of art. Most of the time it starts with poetry uh, from a poetic line. In Terre d'Ombre, for example, T.S. Eliot wrote, uh, I quote, uh, let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky. It was a starting point uh, in my piece. This is a dream of an escape, a reconstruction of the self. Even if the flute is a monodic instrument, there are harmonic links between every note. The melodic line shapes clouds of chords, of words, like the voice. Uh, my music has uh, the inflections of the voice. To decode it, uh, you can think about a white wall with, uh, with cracks just behind me. <laughs> All you need to do is stare at a blank wall and you will see the cracks appearing. Uh, it's like, like sprints of sentences. And if you look carefully, they appear as you go on. It's like a word of uh, resonance, like uh, flashbacks and echoes, reflections of the texture. The patterns reappear uh, like via your window with slight changes, uh, creating a specific nostalgia. A 
the form follows the, the principle of alternative options. Verses are differ uh, of different colors face a chorus made up of two notes, which is constantly changing. That's an evocation of the starting point of Memorial by Pierre Boulez. These tracks of silence are singular spaces that uh, exempt themselves from the time that consumes us. Uh, you know, I am using rhythm to fight against the danger of the space that surrounds us. Uh, by decomposing my, my own reality, uh, my own experience, my goal is to create something universal. Um, I try to tell the story of the person in front of me. The silence is like a vast chord, like the reflection of a mindscape. I have met Pierre Boulez in 1987. I was young. The, the flutist Michel de Bost organized a meeting and I found myself face to face with Pierre Boulez when I was 23 years old. For three hours at the Cité Universitaire of Paris. In the first meeting, we didn't talk about music, but about just about poetry, Kafka uh, and Pessoa. Yeah, I remember that. It was very important for me. It was meaningful to me because after the talk, I left him and I was convinced uh, that nothing was better that, uh, than autonomy. And what matters is what is self-taught. It gave me confidence. It gave me confidence. Yeah. A common ground is we get to the bottom of things, you know. <laughs> uh, after we only spoke about music in the following uh, meetings, of course. <laughs> I have already played some of, uh, of his pieces before with the guitar. I play the guitar. Le Marteau Sans Maître, Under His Conducting, and, and Domaine. When I was studying at the CNSM of Paris, I read his score, of course, and his essays. Uh, the study of his writing techniques has helped me to develop a personal language. It has sharpened my determination uh, in the search of new ways to write. But <laughs> stylistically, in my work, <laughs> you will not find anything of his music but the letter gives uh, as a, an impulse um, to play with the audible material and, and to project personal images. Um, it's like uh, a river spring, yeah. Uh, you know, I really like the idea of Emmanuel Pau being alone without an audience. I really like that not on stage, but playing on top of the hall. I like it because this moment is universal, not temporal, and consequently truthful. The gaze and the ability to listen are present in a distant world. Everything has another value. It's very important for me, in fact. This thin thread of voice uh, in this acoustic has more weight. Sometimes during concert, there are too many chords in convention, the day, the time, the pieces. And I think in this distant world, it's as if the all was um, breathing, you know? The all was breathing, yeah. The all is a, is a breathing body. Yeah, it's addressing everyone because nobody is present. <laughs> and the solitude <laughs> of the one who plays is the solitude of the person who will listen to it. And this too, solitude will uh, vibrate 
together. It's a real life for me. We are not listening to sing the same way we used to during this time period. Uh, time has another phase for me. It did not flow with the same speed, I think. The freeze frame allows us to consider um, the journey of someone's life to find back a regular breathing uh, pattern, a breathing pattern. And you know, Emmanuel and I play together very often. It's like, it's very important for us to play together. And it has helped us uh, develop a bond of trust. Uh, each one of us keeps surprising the other all the time. It's like a game, a good game. It's often like listening to the piece for the first time at every concert. It's new, all new. We know each other's mindscapes perfectly. We play in tune with, um, with the atmosphere of each day. It's changing all the time. I write for him and he plays for me without needing direction from me, which is quite rare. Yeah. I have written, you know, a concerto for him, uh, quelque part dans l'inachevé, in French. Uh, we never had to talk on once about the peace before the creation. Uh, there is trust, there is uh, freedom. When it comes to Terre d'Ombre, uh, we, <laughs> we only had a simple exchange on the phone, <laughs> only a glance, <laughs> just. It will be my first time listening to the piece at the creation. And you know, the, the period of the pandemic has been important to me because uh, I wanted to let the truth of, uh, of speech run free. You know, I wanted to let the truth of speech run free. I wanted the voice to be truthful. Uh, sincere, uh, without artifice. Writing is to listen to a voice that, that, is in, that is a vibration. Writing is just retranscribing a voice in my inner world, in your inner world. I have just to listen to. We will have uh, other projects in the future to go even further. In the meantime, once Emmanuel plays, this fantastic oil will be like a lung, you know, like a lung, like a simple vibration. Uh, I am currently writing a piano concerto, and I know that uh, I will always look for the economy of means, uh, try to find speech with a with a chatter. The beginning of my piece, you know, <laughs> is the end of another story. It's a world in a single note. I try to write, to write now like this, a world in a single note. 